You um you mentioned uh, in like your earlier answer um that there was like some concerns you had originally with Bitcoin uh, and some things that you thought would be be an issue and then and, and I guess you also also you intimated and I don't know if it's the case or not but but there's still some sort of I don't know gripes maybe that you have with uh with with like the way that Bitcoin's designed or some concerns at least I guess anyway uh with with Bitcoin um do you recall what the sort of issues were that you had or, or or do you have like a a view now on like kind of some disadvantages to bitcoin or this or its design that or things you feel like you maybe would have done differently i suppose i guess that's a like a long list of nitpicks uh things like why why are the timestamps in the header 32 bits I mean, for fuck's sake or uh like all the weird endiness stuff um but okay th those are like technical nits that are possible to work around there's slightly more fundamental issues um like uh the fact that the merkle trees don't commit to the depth or the type of the the node uh so this led to this um uh i think sergio learners uh um like spv attack uh so th th there's all sorts of gripes like that which are okay i mean we we can work with them uh right th these are flaws um but they're not um they're not deal breakers um my main issues at the time were um like the monetary policy i actually would prefer like um uh asymptotically zero percent inflation instead of like uh a, a fixed uh supply i i it seems like a more sustainable thing to me um uh it it removes some of the like the weird complex dynamics in like how fees are done but i mean it's it's too late for that and again we we can work with what we've got same thing for the happenings uh i thought that was like a really crude and, and weird mechanism but i mean it's it's priced in and and by now like it appears i was wrong about that it, it seems to have like significant meme value by the you know the volume of discussions that that people are having on you know twitter and whatnot so like um none of those things really matter like okay i, I would have done it differently and i have a long list of you know things and of course i would have screwed up a whole bunch of other things but none of that really matters because the system already exists um the important attributes are the the fairness of the launch the like the novelty of the system um and um the the fact that it's the first of its kind and in, in gathering a sort of network effect um those things are not replaceable uh and uh like bickering about the minutia that i thought was much more consequential uh previously it's yeah it's it's just not that big a deal in hindsight so um I mean, I, I could go into to more depth about what I think is, you know, ugly about the system, but um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I mean, it is what it is. And I think it's, it's more interesting to think, okay, given these constraints, what, um, and then referring to like uh, Adam Gibson's uh, interview uh, on on this podcast, where, where he was saying like the 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 DNA of a blockchain is like this property of uh, verifiability, and how uh, it's very important to have transparency uh, with regards to that verifiability, and this also um, means um, that like building on complicated cryptographic primitives um, uh, in some sense reduces that verifiability. Like given that Bitcoin is is kind of flawed or, or at least janky, um, but not fundamentally flawed um, and makes a very, very clear trade-off, um, it, it seems like it's impossible to like address any of these minor concerns um, without compromising uh, these properties or um, like trying to, to establish consensus about, you know, all these like ultimately not very consequential details. 
um, it just doesn't seem important enough, I guess. Whereas, you know, issues like uh, making sure that fungibility um, uh, does manifest in some capacity, uh, that seems like a, you know, a very high priority. Um, and, and I don't see that Bitcoin has like serious flaws uh, in this regard. It's, um, uh, I mean, it's, we have to work under very limiting constraints, but um, it's a trade-off that I think is acceptable. Um, and, and this is why personally, like, even though I find Zcash, Monero, uh, et cetera, uh, very interesting on a, like a technical level, I think the innovations are, are, are great and interesting. Um, uh, it's not what I would want to work on because, um, the, the social impact doesn't seem as important. I was thinking, obviously you're, you're working in, in a lot of privacy based Bitcoin work, uh, and, and you, you mentioned as well, like, um, kind of the 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 imperfections but kind of the fact that actually things like the, the halving have actually kind of been a, a good thing almost for bitcoin a bit of a kind of meme ability kind of thing and that sometimes imperfections can almost help um and you obviously just mentioned there at the end about zcash and monero something i wanted to ask you was like uh you know why because obviously if you're working the privacy side of things with bitcoin what pushed you towards bitcoin and that rather than monero but but it sounds to me is, is it the case that it's more that, you know, there's more impact with Bitcoin, it's more established, it's more important to you and to others? Is that more the reason? Or is it more that, for example, uh, you know, we've spoken to people on the podcast before, uh, I think it was Jack Manzuko and I think maybe even Adam Gibson, um, who who kind of felt that having everything, everything baked in, you know, a lot baked in, privacy baked in at that base layer um, kind of caused more issues than actually having a, a simpler base sort of clearer more transparent base layer that you could then build upon with layers is is, is is that a part two or is it more literally just the kind of social impact aspect of bitcoin that made you think hey this is what i want to work on i guess what i'm trying to ask is like what was it that made you go hey this is the one like bitcoin is what i want to work on not you know monero zcash etc what were the kind of the key key factors i guess it's much more the the social aspects um when I was first getting interested in this stuff, I did not have the requisite background um, to, I, th I think now I have the requisite background to understand like Monero's cryptography, certainly not Zcash. Um, so that that's another barrier. Like Bitcoin was a thing where I actually was able to understand the problems and and, and see them clearly and, and start thinking of solutions. So, um, uh, one aspect is like, I felt like I could actually make um, a, a contribution there. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's much more so that like, um, if the way I see it, if Bitcoin were to, to fail completely, uh, catastrophically, uh, it's going to bring down the whole ecosystem with it. Uh, that there's like, th there's no saving, you know, cryptocurrencies as a, a way towards decentralized money. Um, I think if, if the, that project fails. So I think the social aspects are like, specifically the reason I'm interested in Bitcoin is um, I've, I've always like, as far back as I can remember, like uh, uh, even as a four year old, like getting dragged to the running errands with my parents and, they go to the bank and it's like the most boring and oppressive environment and none of it makes sense. And I have, you know, practical questions like who puts the money in the ATM and why? Like what what makes it so that you can get the money out of there? Like uh, where does it come from? And like the, the answers just never made sense. Uh, and then like as, as I grew older, I learned about, you know, uh, foreign exchange markets and, and I learned about inflation and I learned about a whole bunch of other stuff. And, um, and it's like economics is, or macroeconomics is kind of works like in reverse to like the way science typically does where the the theories become mainstream and then they're applied as part of government policy uh it's not really uh for the most part like 
an explanatory model, uh, a descriptive model of how the world works. It's it's a prescriptive like doctrine um, that just doesn't it, it doesn't really mesh for me. Um, uh, and um, I, I always kind of felt um, like my, my parents were not very well off financially growing up, but, you know, by the time I became an adult, they, they were uh, firmly in the middle class and, and got their, their debt in order and so on. So um, uh, like we were, um, uh, we, we went from living, you know, quite modestly, uh, certainly not poor or anything like that, but um, uh, like I had material desires that went unfulfilled as a kid and, and kind of learned to, you know, I don't really get gratification from having a disposable income as an adult. Uh, so like for a few years I was, you know, compensating for all the, the crap I wanted as a kid and couldn't get. And uh, uh, now that I'm, you know, a man child, I, I can afford to, to buy that stuff. And, you know, but what, what good does it really do? Uh, well, uh, so so that that passed rather quickly, and then I felt like, well, do I invest? Do I start saving? Like, um, and it it always seemed like a double bind. Like, regardless of what I looked into, um, everything seemed like it was stacked against me. Where um, uh, I could take, you know, uh, uh, a, a low risk tolerance approach to, uh, trying and, and establishing a future. But then I, you know, so I, I set aside more money towards my pension funds or something, but then I have to trust corrupt insurance companies and, and like, uh, uh, like in Israel specifically, this, this is a whole, um, like this, this network of uh, billionaires uh, owning the banks and and major corporations and insurance companies and um, like they've been caught embezzling funds uh, and and you know their their fines and and debts are forgiven routinely they evade tax and that doesn't seem to matter uh, so like I don't want to trust these people with my future uh, I don't even trust the government with uh, with the future. So, um, uh, this, you know, low risk strategy seems not very viable, but then also like any sort of high risk, strategy, like, do I start like investing in the stock market? Uh, like, no, I'm just going to get wrecked. Uh, cause you know, the median investor just loses money. Uh, and I don't have the resources or the time to like, you know, have, have a, a a strategy that's actually gonna uh, result in anything better than you know uh, average returns. So like everything felt like a scam in the financial world, and this was you know um, really reinforced for me with the the 2008 financial crisis and the fact that like nobody got indicted except for Iceland, if I remember correctly. Uh, like they they uh, I think uh, tried to prosecute uh, a few bankers or but like so the 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 when when you have a when you have a feeling that the there's like a game that um the the only like the, the expected value of of participating in this game is negative um you kind of develop this like nihilistic point of view i guess um so I, I just spent all my money on on travel and and uh, uh, basically all my money was spent trying to accumulate experiences, which is what I actually valued. So like if it was you know material possessions in the service of actually doing something interesting, you know, using up my my time on Earth to 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 have fun to to build memories, that seemed justified. Um, but it still felt like um a cop out basically like this was not a responsible way to you know manage my finances and uh even though it, it i still in hindsight think it was you know rational um like the absence of a way to um hedge against the mismanagement of like the entire economic political system was um uh 
uh, yeah, just felt, you know, there, there needs to be some sort of option to, and I, I mean, you can plant trees, you can get into real estate or something. Um, I guess that was the closest thing uh, I could have considered before, like saving money for a mortgage or something. But even that seemed kind of, you know, scammy. Um, so uh, to, to me, that is the, the main function that Bitcoin provides. It's not, you know, a speculative instrument. It's not for buying coffee. It's not for like the purpose of this thing is to uh, allow people to um, earn money earn fiat money in the the normal way the economy works and to uh use that to to buy bitcoin as sort of signal to uh, to to the rest of the, the economic system um that we need to to do better basically um and in doing so these people are forfeiting uh short-term uh uh interests um, on the off chance that like this will work and they will have more economic influence uh, later down the line. So, so basically it's a, uh, it's not just a savings instrument to me, but it's, it's also a way of um, like the, the only way that in, in my life so far I've, I've found that I can feel like I'm applying market discipline and it's not just me like screwing myself over. Like be before the choice was like, I could maximize my purchasing power by buying as quickly as possible with my uh, slowly inflating uh, money uh, and um, uh, contribute to the destruction of, of the world through consumer culture and, and, and uh, all, all you know all, all the stuff that I end up actually paying for indirectly like advertisements and and uh, and oil wars and and uh, uh, environmental destruction and so on uh, or you know I could do the uh, proper thing which from a self-interested point of view is is completely irrational which is like just try and save that money uh, see it lose uh, uh, its value um, uh, and, and it's like, I have some really absurd examples. Like I moved to the UK a few years ago for, for that job uh, I mentioned earlier. And I was looking into like um, uh, uh, savings accounts and I had spent uh, probably two hours reading the various uh, um, conditions and, and terms and so on. And then I realized like, if I set aside the maximum amount of money that I'm allowed to by law, at the the best possible interest rate, locking away the maximum uh, amount for the longest time at the highest rate, uh, giving up the the most control that I would not even be uh, like break even with with regards to my time spent researching that. It was like over three years I would have made something like a hundred pounds or something, which um, like. I, I valued my time more than that. So I, I already felt like, you know, I, I lost before I even started. So what's the point? Uh, and and to, to me, like Bitcoin is uh, primarily about that. It's it's about um, having a way of, of expressing preferences um, about how the world should function um, that cannot be uh, silenced after the fact, uh, just because some politician decides like they know better. Um, and in this regard, like I don't see the lack of privacy as really a, a fundamental flaw. It's, it's definitely a source of friction, but um, like the, the network effect is much more important to me and, and uh, um, uh, the, the transparency uh, properties, the, the trade-offs between technical complexity and verifiability. Um, I, I think the more conservative trade-off is exactly what Adam Gibson was saying about um, how, how uh, um, it, it's, it's better to have like a more, more modest system in terms of its uh, um, capabilities um, uh, to, to avoid the the possibility of a catastrophic failure and um, uh, and and similarly, like the concerns about scaling, um, 
uh, or the, the concerns about, um, you know, can we do like fancy DeFi stuff on it? Uh, to me, that's not very interesting. Um, I'm much more interested in, in uh, Bitcoin's ability to kind of rein in the, the recklessness of the fiat system. And, and if we can do that, and if we can force, uh, right, if um, it becomes a better proposition to exit the system and, and whenever you see that there's local mismanagement and you manage to like extract uh, currency out of your your local economic network and set it aside to you know uh, put it into Bitcoin um, thereby um, helping to, to down regulate the um, the craziness um, if that has a positive effect on how fiat is managed because because now uh, debt based currencies uh, need to compete with it and we fix our systemic problems. Well, I mean, we already have a system that from a technical standpoint is, you know, it's fine. Like we, we can pay for day-to-day -day things. Um, so um, it's, it, the, the social aspects are, are like the reason uh, in, in my opinion to, to care about this thing. Um, and, and yeah, from this perspective, it's, um, it, it, it's kind of like, Zcash and Monero are um, make different trade-offs. They make even more difficult scalability trade-offs, um, and it it doesn't seem like the risks um, outweigh the benefits, even had they happened before Bitcoin happened. But given that they were they came later, it's almost irrelevant to me. Like. Again, the 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 privacy, the, the the like the the technical ways in which it's achieved is fascinating to me. Uh, I think it's really cool tech, um, but monetarily, I just don't see that they are um, important enough. Um, I'm I'm very happy that they're around, complementing Bitcoin. Uh, I think that they do have a role to to play in in improving its privacy as well, and. Uh, um, but but personally, I, I don't think that like if I'm trying to exercise that choice of um, uh, feeling that I'm opting out of this corrupt system and and uh, um, and spending my energy uh, like planning for the future, um, buying Bitcoin seems like the closest thing to. Um, uh, uh, so, something I have hopes about, whereas like buying Monero and, and Zcash, um, that j just seems like a much riskier proposition if that's really what I'm interested in, um, if, if that makes sense. Okay.